thank you, Vincenzo, and uh, thank you uh, for inviting me, uh, Alberto and Vincenzo, to this uh, seminar. It is a great pleasure for me uh, to speak today uh, to all of you. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to present a joint work with Marta Fiori Karones, uh, Leszek Kołodziejczyk, my supervisor, as already been said, and Keita Yokoyama. Uh, the title is, as you can see, Reverse Mathematics of Some Ramsey Theoretic Principles Over a Weak Based Theory. Uh, so, ah, and I cannot, you know, change. Uh, yeah, now it's fine. <laughs> I thought that there was a problem with um, uh, changing the slides. So, uh, firstly, I'm going to uh, explain uh, what the uh, what the title uh, says. So, uh, uh, just a few words about reverse mathematics, uh, because I learned that uh, this is for general logical audience, so maybe uh, a few sentences uh, will be needed. Uh, then, Ramsey theoretic principles, uh, something about the usual base theory and uh, how uh, reverse mathematics of uh, Ramsey theoretic principle looks like uh, uh, there. Uh, then, uh, what is our uh, weak base theory? And uh, then something uh, called normal versions of uh, the principles, long versions and um, cohesiveness principle. I hope everything uh, from this plan uh, will be clear uh, at the end of the, of the talk. Uh, so, uh, reverse mathematics is a um, program in mathematical logic, uh, uh, which uh, basic uh, question is, is this, what is the minimal set of axioms uh, needed uh, to prove a given theorem T? Uh, another question that is also um, uh, pretty basic and, uh, and natural to ask there is, uh, if we know that in ordinary uh, mathematics uh, some theorem T proves uh, theorem T, uh, T2, uh, we would like to know whether T1 uh, is uh, strictly stronger than, than T2, whether the, the implication is reversible or not. And uh, thirdly, uh, if a theorem T that we are interested in have, uh, has some uh, speaks about some infinite sets, infinite objects. Uh, sometimes we would like to know whether um, uh, this theorem T added to, to our axioms uh, um, allows us to, to prove some new statements about finite objects. Uh, or, you know, this, um, this type of question uh, originates from uh, some worries of, uh, of mathematics uh, slash philosophers about some non-constructive methods in mathematics, whether uh, non-constructive non -constructive methods that uh, allow us to, to prove the existence of some infinite objects, uh, whether they allow us to prove new facts uh, about a finite realm. So the uh, the methodology to, to answer or the first type of question is this. We, we have to set some um, formal uh, setting and pick a weak base theory uh, B in some formal language L. Uh, this theory should be, well, strong enough to make sense of uh, mathematical notions we are going to work with, but not too strong so that we are not able to prove uh, a theorem T that we uh, we want to study. Then we translate this theory T into the language L. Uh, and then we would like to find uh, some logical principle A uh, that uh, would be equivalent uh, to our theorem T over this uh, base theory. And often um, the theorem T uh, is of the form that for every set X there exists a set Y such that where some property of them holds. Uh, and this A uh, often expresses the existence of some uh, subsets of uh, natural numbers. And, uh, well, what kind of uh, theorems uh, we are going to, to talk about? So, and these are going to be uh, some Ramsey theoretic principles, uh, stemming from something called infinite Ramsey theorem. 
And the slogan uh, for this uh, part of mathematics uh, might be this, that in every infinite structure of a given type, uh, there is an infinite substructure with some desired property. Or in another words, uh, well, as, uh, as people often uh, say, is that complete uh, chaos is impossible. That no matter how um, complicated at first glance the structure is, there will always be some substructure uh, with some order within it. So uh, here are uh, four Ramsey-like statements. Um, the first is uh, Ramsey theorem for n-tuples and k-colors, which says that for every uh, coloring of n-tuples of natural numbers with k-colors, there exists an infinite set S, which we call homogeneous, such that the, the coloring is constant uh, on this uh, set. And uh, second theorem, uh, second statement is called a chain-antichain uh, principle, which says that if you have a partial order on natural numbers, there always exists an infinite uh, chain or infinite antichain. Then uh, ascending descending sequence uh, says that uh, if you have an infinite linear order on natural numbers, you will always find an uh, infinite ascending or infinite descending sequence. And uh, the last uh, principle is um, cohesive Ramsey theorem for, well, pairs and two colors. Uh, which says that uh, if you have a coloring of pairs uh, of natural numbers with two colors, you will find an infinite set on which the coloring is stable, which means that for every number, the coloring stabilizes. That is, there is a, a number y such that for all greater numbers, uh, well, the, the color of, of a pair xz is the same as the color of uh, xy. And uh, it is very easy to show that we have uh, this sequence of implications among these principles. Some of them are uh, really trivial, or some of them almost. Uh, here you could uh, add uh, RT4 to, RT5 to, and uh, I, I write only, only two because, um, uh, well, over our, uh, both of our base uh, theories, uh, this number of colors uh, doesn't matter. These are for, for a, fixed uh, length of tuple, they will be equivalent. Um, uh, okay, by the way, if there are uh, any questions, if anything is unclear, please uh, do interrupt, uh, do ask. Uh, I, I want to make it as uh, accessible and clear as possible. Okay, so um, uh, the usual uh, background for reverse mathematics is something called second order arithmetic. Uh, well, don't be don't be misled, but by second order, uh, everything is of course in first order logic. Uh, second order stands for uh, for the fact that we have variables not only for natural numbers but also for uh, subsets of natural numbers. Uh, but uh, if someone would like to be really formal, then one can say that this is a uh, two-sorted uh, language. But, but uh, yeah, just, uh, just remember that this is all first order, first order logic. Our non-logical symbols are constant for zero, for one, uh, for uh, additional multiplication of numbers, order, and uh, epsilon. Uh, models uh, for this language are of the form, well, mx, where m is thought of as a set of natural numbers, and x uh, is some uh, subset of power set of m. And uh, we will work with uh, non-standard models. That this means that um, natural numbers, which I will denote by a Greek letter omega, will be an initial segment of this M, uh, but we'll see that uh, in a moment. Uh, we work with the usual arithmetical, arithmetical hierarchy of formulas. So we have uh, usual classes of uh, sigma zero n formulas and pi zero n, 
sigma zero n are formulas uh, that start with uh, existential quantifier. You have um, n alternating blocks of first order quantifiers, and then uh, a formula which only has uh, bounded quantifiers of this form. Uh, pi zero n is defined dually. And uh, these classes sigma zero n and pi zero n allow set parameters, whereas uh, these classes without uh, superscript zero are purely first order, namely in uh, in this language. So no uh, set variables, and not uh, not epsilon symbol. Okay. Uh, now the the usual uh, arithmetical uh, axioms um, uh, that we study uh, are this. So for a class of formulas gamma, where usually this gamma is uh, some of the just defined classes of uh, sigma n, pi n formulas, uh, we have the following scheme. So we have a scheme of induction. Uh, so for each formula from this class, we, we have a, a sentence that if some property holds for zero and for each x, we have that if phi of x, then phi of x plus one, then the property holds for uh, every number. Uh, scheme of uh, collection, that is uh, for a given number a, if uh, we know that for all smaller numbers, there is a, a witness y such that some formula phi holds of x and, of y, and y, then we can bound those uh, witnesses. There is a bound b such that all the witnesses uh, for numbers below a are below b. And then comprehension axiom, uh, namely uh, we, uh, it says that uh, for each formula from this class, uh, there exists a set x uh, which is just a set of those numbers that uh, satisfy uh, formula X. And the usual base theory for reverse mathematics is uh, RC0, uh, which consists of a comprehension axiom for, for delta 0, 1 formulas. Okay, there was no, nothing about uh, delta class. So delta 0, 1 are those formulas which are uh, sigma 1, and equivalent to some pi zero one. So these are computable uh, properties. Uh, sigma zero one induction and some basic properties of um, uh, operations and order on natural numbers. And RC zero is said to correspond to computable mathematics because this uh, Delta zero one comprehension uh, says basically that computable sets exist. It's probably recursive functions uh, are precisely the primitive recursive ones. And it's first order part, uh, first order that is its consequences in purely first order language uh, is uh, I sigma one. And uh, I will uh, speak quite a lot about um, conservativity results. So uh, what it means that some theory T2 uh, is conservative over uh, theory T1 for some uh, class of formula gamma in their common language. It means that uh, for every formula from this class, if, uh, if it is provable from T2, it is already provable from T1. Uh, and uh, we will uh, be interested in, in conservativity for arithmetical formulas, that is for formulas in purely first order language. And uh, another uh, notion is uh, pi 1 1 conservativity, uh, uh, which is uh, means that uh, some theory is conservative for all formulas or of this form, that is we, that is we quantify over, uh, over set variables uh, occurring in a phi, and then we have a formula without any uh, set quantifiers. Uh, so this uh, 
almost the same as, uh, as arithmetical conservativity and uh, and the yeah, gamma often will be uh, something like pi 3 uh, pi 4 pi 5 uh, we'll see so now just uh, a few um, Mm, a few important uh, facts about uh, Ramsey-like statements over uh, RC0. Uh, so firstly, uh, we don't need to, to worry about all these instances RT and K because of the logical equivalence we have only RT32 and RT22. And uh, it is provable over RC0 that this chain of implication holds. Um, uh, the I think the, the 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 only not that easy to show over RC zero was the last one, which was the the proof was given uh, by Hirschfeld and Shor. Uh, now RT three two is equivalent to uh, one of very uh, important subsystems of second order arithmetic AC zero, uh, which is well very very strong theory uh, is. Axioms say that arithmetical or arithmetically definable sets exist, whereas RT22 uh, does not imply AC0. This is a very uh, known important result by Sitapun and Sleiman. RT22 is uh, much weaker. And um, yeah, actually, RT22 is uh, one of the uh, most important cases of a mathematical theorems uh, that. Uh, are very uh, easy to formulate. Uh, they, it speaks just about some infinite uh, subsets of natural numbers, uh, but it is not equivalent to any of the uh, so-called big five subsystems of second order uh, arithmetic. And uh, in the first year of this program of reverse mathematics, there were a lot, a lot of results that uh, some theorems from uh, um, well, mainstream mathematics, some, well, I, would, I should say some, some maybe college mathematics from analysis, from algebra, are just uh, equivalent to one of five uh, sub, sub theories of uh, full second order arithmetic. And RT22 is an uh, uh, example of, of, a, of a theorem that is very um, important in mathematics. It has a is very versatile in in its use in different branches of mathematics because you can render a lot of uh, theorems, uh, a lot of problems in mathematics in terms of colorings uh, of natural numbers, and uh, its logical strength uh, is still not fully understood. So, um, so there is a result by uh, a very important, very deep one by Bate and Yokoyama that RT22 is pi 0, 03 conservative over RC0, uh, but it is still open whether, uh, well, it is fully, well, pi 1, 1 conservative over uh, over this theory. It's, it's known that it implies uh, B sigma 0, 02, but we don't know uh, uh, whether it uh, implies some, some other arithmetical statements uh, uh, then B sigma zero two, uh, and here, uh, yeah, I also mentioned that none of these uh, principles uh, that we study implies or, or follow from a WKL zero. Uh, I mentioned this because well, WKL zero is one of those uh, basic subsystems of uh, second order arithmetic. It says that uh, every infinite binary tree has an infinite path. Um, and uh, and we will uh, uh, see um, WK is all later on in the stock. Uh, actually, this uh, this fact uh, is uh, is used in in our uh, work. Uh, yeah, last thing that I mentioned is that well, CAC the uh, the strongest after uh, RT22 of our principles is pi one one conservative over. Uh, B sigma zero two. This is uh, Chong, Sleiman, and Yang, and CRT two two is uh, is a very weak principle. It's uh, pi one one conservative over uh, the base theory. Uh, yes, <laughs> this is uh, this is a diagram of how uh, 
reverse mathematics of Ramsey like combinatorial statements over uh, RC0 looks like. This is taken from um, this web page and this work of uh, Damir Zafarov and uh, I guess Eric Astor. Uh, and uh, now uh, let us see how how the situation of uh, looks like over uh, a weaker based theory. Of course, we don't have that big diagram yet. We just started. Uh, but firstly, um, uh, why uh, one would like to uh, to weaken RC zero? Uh, you know, so the first thing is uh, if you if you assume sigma zero one induction in your base theory, you cannot uh, track it uses in in proofs. You don't know whether uh, sigma zero one induction is really necessary to prove something. Uh, well, secondly, our uh, one of our uh, biggest motivations was uh, to to study Ramsey theorem and uh, some of its consequences uh, over a weaker base theory uh, in hope that maybe we'll get some uh, some insight for the traditional framework of uh, RC0. Uh, because well uh, actually there uh, i remember one situation where uh, it was useful to to weaken um, induction axioms namely in, in work of david belanger uh, on cohesiveness uh, principle i will i will speak uh, about this principle at the end of the talk so sometimes it's uh, you go uh, you go uh, with axioms uh, lower and you can learn something about uh, uh, what happens um, uh, in over RC zero? Uh, and third thing is uh, maybe more uh, philosophical, foundational. Uh, that is, uh, well, RC zero, as I mentioned, has as uh, um, probably recursive functions all uh, primitive recursive ones, and that's quite a lot. If you uh, primitive uh, recursive functions are all the functions from Grzegorczyk hierarchy. So the fourth level is uh, exponential tower, and uh, you have omega many levels. So that's quite a lot. So maybe we would like to work with a base uh, theory um, that uh, that has a more modest computational strength. So our Weak base theory is uh, RC0 star, which is obtained from RC0 by replacing sigma1 induction with delta1 induction. And uh, because we don't uh, have exponential uh, uh, in our exponential symbol in our language, we have to add the axiom that exponential function is total uh, because you normally uh, need sigma1 induction to prove that uh, it is total. You can prove in RC0 star uh, all its usual properties, except that it is a, a total function. So the theory was introduced by Simpson and Smith quite long ago now, in 1980s. Uh, they were studying some theorems from countable algebra, and they proved that some of them over RC0 star are equivalent to I sigma 0 1. Uh, yeah, as I, as I said uh, just before, uh, this uh, theory was um, uh, turned out to be relevant for some results over RC0. Uh, its first order part is axiomatized by uh, sigma1 collection plus uh, uh, totality of uh, exponential function. And probably recursive function of uh, RC0 star are precisely the elementary recursive ones. So um, Every elementary recursive function is bounded but by some finite uh, iteration of exponential. Uh, so it's, uh, I guess, third level of Grzegorczyk hierarchy. And the last, uh, the last bullet will be, will be of uh, great importance for us today. That is over RC0 star, RC0, that is sigma zero one induction, is equivalent to the statement that every infinite set has arbitrarily large finite uh, subsets. Uh, yes. Uh, so here uh, you can see uh, why uh, it is so. Uh, 
so in model theoretic uh, terms, failure of sigma zero one induction uh, is uh, precisely existence in the model of our theory uh, sigma zero one definable proper cut. So a cut in the model of arithmetic is an initial segment of the model which is uh, closed under a uh, successor function. Uh, so it means that, uh, well, you may, uh, you would like to climb up your model and you start uh, from the bottle, bottom of it, from zero, and you go once, uh, you add one at each step, and you may go and go and go, and you, you will never, uh, reach the the top of your model uh well actually you will always be under some i think of it some uh, glazed ceiling um and uh, always together with such a sigma zero one cut there exists an unbounded delta zero one definable set a uh, which can be enumerated by our cut i in an increasing order um and the cardinality of this uh, um, of this uh, set A is uh, strictly smaller than the cardinality uh, of the whole universe. Um, why it is so well? You can. Um, this is basically if this cut i is defined by some sigma zero one formula, then basically this set A is a set of witnesses. Uh, for belonging to this uh, cut i, and uh, one one can think about this uh, set A as the cut i stretched unboundedly in the model. And uh, yes, this uh, this set A has only as um, many uh, elements as this uh, cut i. And in particular, this set A doesn't have a, a finite subset of some big finite cardinality. It has uh, as only as big finite subsets as there are in the cut i. So, for instance, there are there is no finite subset of set A of cardinality where well, here a three. Uh, of course, this set A can, can start much lower. Uh, I made this picture in this way to, to make it more clear. Uh, so now, as you see, we can, uh, we can uh, formalize the notion of an infinite set uh, in two ways. Uh, firstly, we can as usually say that a set S is unbounded if, uh, if it has arbitrarily large um, numbers in it. Or one can say that a set uh, S is uh, infinite if it is of cardinality that of all natural numbers, namely when there is a bijection from the whole universe to the set S. And uh, here by, by this uh, bolt N, I, I denote the natural numbers as seen within a particular model. And uh, standard real natural numbers will be denoted later by a Greek letter omega. Uh, uh, yes. So now uh, here we have again the definitions of our uh, principles. Uh, to see that there is some problem with formalizing them in our weaker base theory because they uh, say something about infinite sets. Uh, they postulate existence of, of some infinite subsets of natural numbers. So now there are, as, uh, as you saw, two ways of uh, making sense of, uh, of each of this principle. And thus we obtain uh, a bigger than usual, the, the so-called reverse mathematical zoo. Uh, namely, we may uh, require that uh, the set witness in a given principle is just unbounded and uh, we called this uh, group of principles normal versions because normal because this is usually they are 
uh, formalized over RC0, but over RC0, these two formulations are uh, equivalent. Over RC0 star, as I said, not. So uh, if we require this witnessing set to be of cardinality that of n, uh, then we obtain long versions, and we denote it uh, this way. And uh, you can see that uh, now we have two versions of uh, ascending descending sequence principle. So we have a set version and sequence version. Uh, I will explain why we have two of them later when I move to, to long versions, but uh, it's going to be important uh, that there are two of them. Because actually, this, uh, these guys will turn out to be uh, strong principles, where are these two others uh, will be weak. And uh, the rest of the talk will be uh, uh, will be to explain uh, this diagram. Uh, yeah, so as I already said, some long versions uh, are strong in the sense they they imply sigma zero one induction over RC zero star, and the rest is pi zero three conservative over uh, RC zero star. So. Uh, are there any questions so far? Uh, uh, it's, uh, can you hear me well? <laughs> there is okay. Okay. Now I now I will realize that I'm quite far with my time. But uh, can I ask you? I mean, I would like to understand better the concept of cardinality in a C. Yeah. Stop. Because so when you say that. Its cardinality is strictly smaller than n. You mean that it's like it's unbounded, but there is no bijection to n. What, what do you mean with strictly smaller? Yes, there, there is no no bijection uh, in the model in this uh, second order universe. And uh, so there is kind of a concept of cardinality infinite. Cardinality, the sense of unbounded below n. Yes. Below so, actually, yeah. You know, I was wondering if there is kind of like um, cardinality is ill founded somehow, so you can always find unbounded uh, uh, sets smaller and smaller, or. Uh, uh, it depends. It can be this or that way. So okay. uh, uh, it's uh, because there are as many cardinalities of unbounded subsets of n as there are sigma zero one definable cuts. And now there can there are two cases. Either uh, either there is uh, the smallest sigma zero one definable cut, and then you have the smallest possible infinite cardinality, or not. There are smaller and smaller uh, sigma zero one definable cuts. All situations are possible. And by by cardinality, I just mean a bijection. We we don't formalize here uh, cardinal numbers. Uh, it's, it's just about uh, uh, a function. Thank you. Uh, okay. So I, I realized that I, I should be uh, I should be more quick <laughs> with explaining, but uh, uh, yeah. So what about normal versions? So we will uh, uh, we will transfer uh, instances and solution to to our principles, uh, uh, back and forth, uh, our uh, big model and some sigma zero one uh, definable cut. So uh, we uh, we study uh, a cut I together uh, with uh, the family of its coded subsets, which we denote uh, like this, uh, as a second order uh, structure. Well, second order arithmetic structure where we say that a subset of uh, of a cut i is coded in a model if there exists a, a number in model s such that s is a code uh, uh, 
of a finite set and intersection of this finite set with uh, with cut i is precisely x. You know, in uh, in standard model where we have standard natural numbers, we we have codes only for uh, finite numbers uh, due to uh, exponential functions, right? Uh, it can be done, say, by uh, Ackermann interpretation of finite set theory, uh, as you like. Uh, but when we work with a non-standard model and we have some cut, uh, then uh, we might have, well, we have codes for uh, an, well, subsets of some of this cut, which are unbounded in the cut, in the sense of this model M, they are finite sets, but we, when we intersect with, with a cut, uh, uh, we, we may obtain, well, both finite subsets of I and unbounded subsets of I. And we have a separate, uh, separate uh, notation for uh, coded subsets of uh, standard natural numbers of omega, we called it a standard system. Uh, so there is a very, uh, very nice, useful lemma proved by Chong and Murat uh, quite long ago, which says that uh, if you have a, a cut in a, uh, in a model of RC0 star, and both uh, some subset Y of this cut and its complement with respect to, to the cut I, if they both are sigma 0, 1 definable in M, uh, then uh, they are coded. They are in this uh, second order uh, uh, structure. Uh, intuitively, this is uh, an analogous uh, um, analogous uh, situation to, to this basic fact from computability theory, that if you have a, a recursively enumerable set of natural numbers such that its complement is also recursively enumerable, then this set is actually a computable one that is uh, delta zero one definable. So we have this uh, property for uh, for cuts. And this is quite remarkable and uh, incredibly useful in what follows. So the, the basic uh, theorem, uh, which uh, allows us to draw many, many consequences for our uh, principles over RC zero star is this. But when you have a model of RC0 star and with a proper sigma 0, 1 definable cut i, uh, then any of these principles is satisfied by, in the big model M, with some uh, family of its subsets x, even only if it is satisfied uh, on the cut i. And uh, the proof for each of these uh, principles is, is very similar. In fact, we have uh, this theorem uh, formulated in some uh, more general terms for some, for some class of uh, 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 sentences. Uh, uh, and uh, it goes like this. this. So I... Uh, I wrote something about RG22, and this is a direction from right to left. So uh, here you have the, uh, this is the, the unbounded set A, uh, as before, in the cut I. And suppose that uh, RG22 holds on the cut. So we want to check that it also holds in the, in the big uh, structure. So suppose we are given a coloring of pairs uh, of numbers from M in two colors. So what we do, we transfer it on the cut I. How? By the use of our unbounded set A. As I said, this unbounded set A is basically this cut, but stretched. So we define the coloring of pairs uh, of elements from the cut I in the obvious way. That is, we, we say that uh, elements of the cut AI, A2 uh, have the same color as uh, corresponding elements AI1, AI2. And now by the uh, Chongmura dilemma, uh, we verify that this coloring is indeed coded in our model. Uh, so it, it belongs to this uh, uh, second order structure. And uh, by RG22, uh, 
being satisfied in uh, on the cut i we know that there exists uh, h hat in this uh, coded sets homogeneous for uh, c hat and we transfer it in back uh, to m using some a code of it and this uh, unbounded set a and this is uh, this is delta 0 1 definable from those two things and that's it and the the other direction is uh, is very similar we also have to use chunk morat coding lemma to to verify that uh, uh, that some coloring or some homogeneous set is uh, is coded and uh, immediate consequence of this theorem is this that if uh, in a model uh, of rc0 we have failure of sigma 1 induction uh, of uh, light phase induction without any second order uh, any set parameters uh, then this ramsey like some ramsey like principle p is satisfied in the big structure by a family of subsets uh, x even only if it is satisfied by uh, computable uh, subsets of the universe uh, because in the in the proof of the previous theorem uh, we haven't used uh, any uh, any sec sets except uh, those that were possibly used to define uh, uh, the cut i so if the cut i uh, is defined without any set parameters like here uh, then we have this um, equivalence. From this, it follows that sigma one is i sigma one is uh, necessary to prove that there are computable instances of any of our principles without computable solutions. These are classical results from uh, uh, well computability uh, for Ramsey for person to colors. Uh, it was proved I don't know 1960s by by Specker, I guess. So um, all these principles are, are badly false in computable sets, but uh, to prove it, you need sigma one induction. So in particular, there are models of this form in which all these principles are uh, satisfied. And uh, we obtain immediately uh, non-conservativity result. Uh, so consider for each of our principles P, uh, such a purely first order sentence that if sigma one induction fails, then computable sets satisfy P. And for uh, first four of the principles, this statement has complexity pi four, and for CRT22, it is uh, pi five. And uh, further, we, uh, we also learned that uh, any two of our principles remain distinct over uh, in models of this theory uh, of course there are they are distinct over rc0 there are mm, uh, yeah the, uh, the the separation results are uh, are in different uh, papers i'm not going to cite all of them but yeah these principles are known to be distinct over RC0, even over RC0 plus WKL. Uh, but uh, one could ask where, if the, if the word uh, looks uh, very strangely, like if sigma one induction fails, maybe, uh, maybe some uh, implication uh, collapse, but they don't. And uh, what's more, all these principles have different sets of arithmetical consequences over RC0 star. And uh, yeah, and generally we, we obtained a, a criterion for pi one one conservativity over RC zero star, namely uh, a principle, uh, well, P like some of this or, uh, or similar where we have uh, defined uh, some syntactical class of sentences for which it holds. It is pi one one conservative over RC zero star if it is provable from WKL0 uh, star, which is just WKL0 without uh, uh, sigma 1 induction. Uh, sigma 1 induction replaced with delta 0 1 induction. 
but I said that uh, these principles uh, are weak in the sense that they are uh, pi zero three conservative over RC zero star. And uh, again, to prove it, we will use the theorem uh, about equivalence uh, with uh, a cut. So uh, one can, uh, the idea is, uh, well, this, that we, we show that uh, if you, if there is a sigma zero three formula consistent with RC zero star, and it is also consistent with RC zero, zero star uh, together with this principle P. And uh, so we start uh, from a model of RC zero star together with some sigma zero three sentence. Here this phi is uh, only with only bounded quantifiers. And uh, we pick some number A, which uh, is a witness to this uh, uh, initial quantifier. Uh, we can we can choose uh, this model and A such that A is non-standard and uh, coded subsets of omega its standard system satisfies p these are uh, standard uh, well-known techniques from um, theory of models of arithmetic i'm not going to explain it now uh, but it is yes something really un unproblematic and now the idea is that we will uh, build a, uh, we will build, build a cut in this model m uh, because now we we would like to um, to use our theorem uh, about equivalence with cut and we could do it if we if we knew that omega is sigma sigma 1 definable uh, because we know that uh, coded subsets of omega satisfy p well, then we would like to transfer it to to some uh, family of subsets of m uh, but uh, we cannot do it if uh, if omega is not sigma one definable, and to make it uh, sigma one definable, we we do this. Uh, we define in our model such a function uh, such that uh, well, we want to make in our cut uh, um, the formula this formula uh, satisfied. So what we do is uh, on an argument y, the value of the function f is the least w. Well, firstly, it has to be bigger than uh, 2 to y to, to have uh, totality of exponential in our target model. And then uh, it will be the, the least w such that all numbers below y have witnesses to, for our form, formula below w and then we iterate this function starting from number a which was non-standard we iterated omega many times and they take supremum and uh, yes then omega is clearly sigma one definable mm, the standard system uh, of k of this shorter model is the same as that of m for some basic uh, basic model theoretic reasons, namely codes for subsets of omega are arbitrarily low uh, above omega. Mm. And uh, now by the previous theorem, we, we know that uh, delta one uh, definable subset of K uh, satisfy P uh, because it is satisfied on a sigma one definable cut. And by the definition of F, uh, this model also satisfies this formula. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, uh, conservativity for all these principles. And there was nothing specific about uh, being RG22 or CAC or ADS, whatever. Uh, one only needs to, uh, for this theorem to, to hold, one only needs to um, uh, be able to do this. And that is one one has to uh, know that this is something uh, 
to do with WKL0, uh, namely to, to be able to code some family of subsets of omega, it has to be countable and has to satisfy with Koenig's lemma. So if you know that there is a, a omega model of WKL0 plus zero principle and the theorem uh, about equivalence with cut holes for your principle, then you can perform this construction and you obtain uh, pi zero three conservativity. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions? This, mm. Okay. I hope you're you're alive and not lost. Uh, so, what about long versions? In long versions, as you remember, we require uh, the witnessing set, so an infinite chain, anti-chain, ascending sequence, homogeneous set to be of cardinality that of the whole universe. And now, in the case of ADS, ascending, descending sequence, by saying ascending sequence, the for descending will be um, analogous description. Uh, we may either understand that ascending sequence is a subset of n, of cardinality that of n, on which both orderings agree, or by ascending sequence we may uh, mm, mean just uh, a sequence that is a map with domain n uh, such that this holds. And so cl clearly the, um, the set version uh, implies uh, immediately that the second one uh, but uh, to go from uh, bottom to the top, you need sigma one induction. Uh, this is like um, at the level of, of short exercise. Uh, so these they are equivalent over RC zero, and they are e their normal counterparts are also equivalent, because the thing is that if you have um, such a sequence, uh, even of cardinality n, then uh, you have to, when you say, chose the first three elements of your subset S and you want to um, take a fourth element to your subset S from a sequence, then you cannot just take a fourth element uh, as it stands here uh, because it might be smaller uh, according to natural order than the, the first three elements. So you need to look maybe further uh, so that the both uh, orderings will agree. And for norm normal versions, it's it's fine because uh, you may obtain a, a set which will be of smaller cardinality than this sequence. But okay, we, we with normal versions we don't require uh, uh, being of cardinality n. We require only unboundedness. Uh, but for for long uh, versions, it may happen that you have a sequence of cardinality that of n, and you may obtain a unbounded subset with this property but sh but shorter uh, so right so now long versions split into two groups the first uh, four guys imply sigma zero one i sigma zero one so they are imply just rc zero whereas the the second the other two are uh, are like the the normal versions there are they are pi zero three conservative Mm. So why do the first uh, four guys uh, are strong? So the case for uh, Ramsey theorem was proved already by Keita Yokoyama in 2013. And uh, I will explain how to do it for uh, the weakest from these principles, the uh, long ADS set. Uh, we prove it by contrapositive. So we assume that uh, sigma zero one induction fails. So then we have, uh, as usual, this unbounded subset A. And now uh, we, uh, we observe that this uh, unbounded subset A divides our universe into unboundedly many finite intervals. Uh, and, uh, and we define uh, an instance of a linear ordering uh, which doesn't have a, a long ascending or long descending sequence. So here's the definition, but uh, it, is, uh, it is something very simple. Mm. Maybe not that nice to, to read. 
But what we do is that um, within some interval, say from A0 to A1, uh, we uh, order numbers um, in reverse standard order. So we say that, like here, uh, this x in our curly order will be greater than y. But then if we want to compare uh, numbers from different intervals, like x and z, uh, uh, x will be uh, smaller than z. Okay? So now with this definition, we see that uh, every descending sequence is finite. Every descending sequence must be contained uh, in such a, a finite interval, whereas every ascending sequence is of cardinality at most that of y, because every uh, ascending sequence can have at most one element per each uh, finite interval. Uh, yeah, so for for other principles, this proof uh, this proof goes uh, very similarly. We we use this um, unbounded set A and do something with these finite intervals. Mm. Right, and uh, now to to prove that uh, the the other two principles are weak, that is ADS sequence and CRG22, uh, we make a detour through growing grouping principle. Uh, this is our name, but the idea of a grouping principle is uh, not new. It was already used, for instance, by Pate and Yokoyama in their great paper on Ramsey theorem. So uh, our grouping principle says that uh, if you have a coloring of pairs of natural numbers in two colors, then uh, it's uh, you maybe you won't uh, get a homogeneous set, but uh, you will get this, namely uh, a sequence of finite sets we call them groups, indexed possibly by some proper cut i, such that uh, a group with a smaller index is below uh, the group with a bigger index. Uh, then the coloring uh, restricted to, to such a um, Cartesian product is constant. Uh, that is to say that uh, the color of uh, two numbers depends only on the if they are they are from different groups, and the, then the color only depends on the uh, indices of uh, of the groups. And then third thing uh, is that uh, the sizes of the groups uh, grow unboundedly uh, in the model. The, the groups are bigger and bigger. And now uh, I'm not going to to give a proof of this, mm, but. Uh, yeah, it, uh, we use it. Uh, namely, this this principle GG, GGP22 is provable from well WKL zero star plus negated sigma zero one induction. Uh, I will I will skip the idea. I guess that I I should be quicker. Um, a note for transitive colorings: uh, it is provable without uh, with Koenig's lemma. So now, why uh, why uh, do we need this uh, this principle? Um, we uh, we needed to prove these equivalences that this long version of ideas sequence is equivalent to uh, normal ideas, and over WKL zero star uh, we have equivalence between long CRT22 and normal CRT22. Uh, I will I will tell you in just in few sentences how it goes for uh, CRG22. Uh, so uh, the only thing that is needed to be shown is uh, implication over over this assumption from CRG22 to to its uh, long version. This is the only non-trivial thing. Uh, so uh, suppose we have a coloring of pairs of natural numbers with two colors. Uh, we are looking for a for an infinite set of cardinality n on which this coloring will be stable. 
So firstly, we apply this grouping principle to this coloring and we obtain a, a sequence of finite sets uh, as, uh, as in the previous definition, indexed by some cut i. And uh, now, uh, so one can think about it as uh, compressing this, this coloring to, uh, to these groups. Well, compressing, we, then we pick one element from each group and we apply CRT22 to, um, to this set D. And we obtain an unbounded uh, set S on which this uh, coloring C is stable. Well, great. So this set S uh, might be uh, smaller than the whole universe of smaller cardinality, but uh, this is just a, a set of, uh, of, of points from these groups. Uh, but uh, this set S, well, is of, the, of this form. It's indexed by uh, some cut J. And uh, now C is also stable on, on this set of union of uh, all these groups indexed by cut J. And now we use the, the third property of, uh, of grouping, namely that supremium of, of sizes of these groups is N. So, uh, Mm. So this is our uh, yeah. There should be one more line, I guess, in this proof. But uh, but this uh, this union of uh, GIAs is uh, uh, infinite subset of cardinality n on which the coloring is stable. And as a co corollary for ADS, it is it is very similar. As a corollary, we have that uh, both of these uh, principles are pi zero three conservative. Well, because they are uh, equivalent uh, over WKL0 star to, to its normal versions, which were uh, proved to be by 0 3 conservative. Mm, so, uh, a summary. Uh, do I have uh, well, a few more minutes? It's, uh, I see it's half past, uh, well, it's uh, 10 past 5. Um, but uh, I have a few more slides. Maybe I can tell you something about this cohesiveness principle. Uh, but if not, then it's also a good uh, good moment to um, to stop. Oh, I guess we we can stay five more minutes. Okay. And um, does anyone have uh, have a question? Is uh, uh, or what has been said? If uh, I cannot, uh, I cannot see you. I cannot hear you. So uh, you know, it's uh, in a class. So one, uh, one rather immediately knows whether uh, what's uh, whether the the talk is uh, comprehensible, interesting, or not. But uh, <laughs> here it's harder. So okay, uh, we have this nice diagram. I think uh, you have a clear. Um, uh, clear split of our principles uh, for strong ones and uh, weak ones, namely conservative over RC zero star. But there we have an example of uh, another uh, Ramsey-like statement, namely cohesiveness principle, uh, which behaves completely differently than uh, the previous guys. Uh, so, it says that for each sequence of subsets of natural numbers, there exists an unbounded set C, we call it cohesive for this sequence, such that it's almost contained, so contained uh, up to some finite uh, subsets, either in Ri or complement of Ri for each uh, i. And uh, uh, COH uh, implies immediately CRT22. Uh, it follows from RT22 uh, and it holds over RC0, so that it holds R over RC0 was proved later by, uh, by Mileti. Uh, it, it's even provable from ADS. Uh, this is by uh, Hirschfeld and Shore. 
it is pi law one conservative over RC zero, and uh, it's even equivalent to CR two two with uh, sigma two collection. So this is Ramsey like principle, very weak, and um, uh, but uh, but over RC zero star, uh, it's well our main result is that it's it doesn't follow from RC two two. Uh, maybe uh, it doesn't, uh, and it's um, yeah, and it's not uh, pi one one conservative over RC zero star. This was uh, a question by uh, David Belanger whether it is pi one one conservative over RC zero star. It's not because it implies CRT two two, and we learned that CRT two two it's uh, is not uh, pi five conservative, so nor is uh, COH. But why it uh, doesn't follow uh, from RT22? So we make again a detour of, uh, through something called sigma zero two separation principle. Um, it says that for uh, any two disjoint sigma zero two definable sets, A0, A1, there exists a delta zero one definable set which separates them. And uh, over RC0 star uh, COH uh, implies this principle. Uh, over RC0 it was proved by Belanger. Uh, this is a proof sketch. Uh, I will skip it, maybe I will leave it for questions if there will be any. And then we have another lemma that B sigma 1 plus X is enough to prove that this light phase version of this principle uh, is false. You know, now this is important to distinguish between this uh, formula classes with and without a uh, superscript. And uh, yeah, so B sigma 1 plus X is enough. Uh, this is the usual proof one level up uh, uh, of this uh, known uh, theorem that there are two sigma 1 computable inseparable sets. Uh, we use some uh, background uh, for uh, computability theoretical notions in arithmetic developed by John and Young. Um, so it's very straightforward to verify it. So now uh, we, we get that COH is never computably true over RC zero star. That is every model of the form, some first order universe plus delta one definable sets, so, uh, which satisfies RC zero star does not cannot satisfy COH. Why? Because here, if we only take uh, as a second order universe delta one definable sets, then sigma two light phase sets are just the same as sigma zero two uh, sets. Uh, so uh, yes, yeah, so uh, sigma in such a model sigma zero two separation is the same as sigma two uh, separation and is false. Uh, and now a theorem uh, over RC zero star Ramsey theorem for person to colors does not imply COH. Why? Because as we saw before, there are models of RT22 uh, of this form. Mm, yes, yeah, so a few questions that are uh, left open. Uh, yeah, I said that over RC0, there are only two instances of uh, RT and K. And over RC0 star, we don't know. We don't know this basic uh, fact that, uh, well, we don't know whether RT32 implies RT42 and in general RTN2 implies RTN plus 1, 2. Uh, then we don't know whether uh, CRT22 is implied by ADS or CAC. Uh, the proof uh, given by Hirschfeld and Schor uh, clearly uses sigma 1 induction. Uh, then for CRT22, we, we don't know whether it is conservative for uh, pi 4 sentences. Mm. We don't know whether we can mm, get rid of uh, WKL uh, in this equivalence of long version of CRT22 and CRT22, and uh, what is the relation between long CRT22 and normal Ramsey uh, theorem for person to colors? And uh, then 
um, cohesiveness principle uh, is uh, is still mysterious for us. We don't know whether it is strong or uh, or a weak principle, whether it implies sigma one induction or is uh, pi zero three conservative. Yes. So um, these are references to uh, to two uh, papers so from where the the results are written down. And thank you so much for listening. Uh, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So is there any question? So. Well, may, uh, maybe I have uh, a question. It's it's uh, it's a bit vague, but uh, uh, there, there seems to be a, a sort of like a, a very big split between uh, things that are you said uh, so strong uh, was like uh, it implies um, sigma one uh, induction uh, over RCA uh, RCA not uh, star. And then the opposite of strong, uh, you often say it's pi zero three conservative. Mm -hmm. uh, is 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 this randomly three, or is is it because like a lot of them are pi zero th pi zero three conservative, or is there a deeper? Uh, mm. Yes. So um, let me now uh, switch to. Um, slides with uh, without this uh, pauses. Um, uh -huh. sure. Yeah. Mm. Yes, so um, firstly, um, where was this? Um, okay, here we have um, a word about non conservativity. So, actually, all these results uh, are formulated in much, uh, well, maybe not that much, but in more general terms in our paper. So there is nothing that specific about RG22, CAC, ADS. Uh, they have to, they need to have some special syntactical form. We call that pseudo second order. And the, the thing is that we, we define the class of uh, sentences of, uh, second, of language of second order arithmetic for which we can prove this theorem. And uh, if you can prove this equivalence with a cut, then um, and uh, if you uh, if you know that uh, there is a model uh, where well, actually, then then you can uh, then you can have uh, when you have this each of these principles. Or any other for which that theorem uh, would be true uh, implies such a statement that such an arithmetical statement, purely first order, that if sigma one induction fails, then computable sets satisfy th that principle. And you uh, you check what is the complexity of of this statement. And for uh, th these guys, it is uh, it is uh, pi four. For CRT, it is uh, CRT two two. It is pi five. So from from there you you get this non conservativity, and uh, from we we studied just these principles, but I guess that the, the others of Ramsey like character you would try to to study uh, if they uh, if for any such a principle that theorem with a cut would hold, then you would. Uh, 
check the, the complexity of the statements and probably we wouldn't get anything like uh, pi 16, right? It's, it's usually like pi 4 for CRT, it is pi 5 because it says about this uh, stability of the coloring. This increases the, uh, the complexity. And then they are pi 3 conservative. Um, uh, this is again a general uh, method of proving this uh, because they are uh, mm, there are model of WKL0 plus any of this principle. In this proof there is nothing about WKL0 but it is hidden here because uh, standard systems are fa families of subsets of natural numbers that satisfy with Koenig's lemma. So if you have a standard model of your principal uh, uh, standard model that satisfies also with Koenig's lemma, and for all of those principles are true in in the real world, so you will find such a model easily, mm, then you can perform this construction and you uh, and you get pi three uh, conservativity. Uh, well, and and you uh, and this principle ha uh, has to be of, uh, of the special kind for which uh, uh, you have uh, this theorem. Okay, thanks. But, but, for, but for COH, you cannot uh, you cannot show it because with COH, uh, the the thing is that. Uh, COH then this uh, this infinite set that you uh, that is uh, postulated but by COH uh, is required to behave in a certain way not only with respect to one subset of n but to to a long sequence of uh, of subsets of n right before for say ADS uh, CAC this infinite, well, unbounded of sets, uh, this solution set, uh, is required to uh, to behave in a certain way only to some coloring, to some infinite order, or linear or partial. But but here, this cohesive set uh, is different, and this is this is why our previous methods uh, uh, don't allow us to. Uh, to say whether it is uh, pi three conservative or, or whether it implies uh, sigma one induction. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Are there any other questions? Okay. Not then. Let's thank the speaker again.